Hi guys! So today I am going to finally create an Aurora inspired painting. I love experimenting with um, fluid acrylic art techniques and adapting them to kind of fit space art and I really really want to do an Aurora inspired one and this fits in with my two month challenge to create some astronomy sketches or a piece of art every single day. So I will just use my phone to show you what colours I've got and I'll tell you then why I've chosen that technique and then we'll get on and layer the colours in the cup. So this is a painting that I did previously with a bottle bottom and I really like the the way that the lines have kind of held but also the curvy bits once they got distorted. I think that the shape of that would be quite reminiscent of a coronal aurora so that's why I'm going for the bottle bottom technique for, for this aurora inspired painting. And that's just basically the bottom off a, a bottle of um, Pepsi Max actually. I've had it for ages because we have a soda stream now and don't buy bottles anymore but you can just reuse that over and over again. So I'm going to lay my colours into the cup and hopefully this will work. So I'm just using an old yoghurt pot for this so it's quite a big canvas so I'm going to make sure I've got enough paint and I'm just going to run the colours down the side of this cup and hopefully try and preserve some of the, the layers of colour. All of these paints have been mixed one part paint to two parts pouring medium and in this case I used Floetrol and I added a little bit of water to get the fluid consistency that I was looking for. I've also added some mica powder into most of these colours so it will have a, a hint of metallic iridescence which hopefully will look really nice. I've never used mica powder in my pores before so we'll see how it turns out. layered inside the cup. Sorry about the light, there's a sun shining straight in the window here, it's really difficult to um, photograph stuff. There are actually already a few reactions going on on the boundaries between the colours but whatever happens I'll be happy with it I'm sure. It's uh, just really an experiment so let's pour. Okay I've got all the layers in my cup and there should be plenty of paint here. So I'm going to do a tree ring just very slowly over the top of this bottle bottom and hopefully that will give me those curved bands that I'm, I'm looking for. I'm just going to do this slowly. Just making slow circles. And the magic happens once the paint hits the canvas. but I'm going to stop there. I'm just going to lift this off and then let it sit for a minute and try and actually I'm going to leave that to just drain for a couple of minutes and I'm going to lift that off and let the hole close up before I do the next bit. 
and hopefully stretch out some of those lines and get some lovely effects. I've got loads of cells um, I was hoping to not have too many but there, there are quite a few. I'm just going to torch quickly to pop any other air bubbles that might be around. Yeah there's loads. Uh, well never mind. I did all my uh, mixing yesterday and I was hoping that the, uh, the air bubbles would have been gone by right now. Rather annoyingly my stupid digital SLR camera cut off so I only managed to get a really small amount of the process on the video but basically I poured it over the, uh, the the bottle bottom and then I just carefully tilted. Now I didn't really want cells but I love this and the sparkle from the mica powder I really hope that that shows up when it's dry. It's really hard to get a a good picture of this when the sun's shining in the window on it and it's still wet with all the reflections but wow I am so in love with this. I really really hope it dries like this because it's just gorgeous. Floetrol can make the colours dull a little bit but oh wow. So the plan is once this is dry <clears throat> or well, the plan initially was anyway to paint some um, trees on there so it looks like a, a kind of region up near the arctic circle with um, pine trees and a massive coronal aurora display going on I love this so much I kind of don't want to put anything else on it but I'll see what it looks like when it's dry it's a fair bit of paint on here so it's going to take a few days so I'll just leave this on the, the level canvas here, made sure everything was level before um, I started to, to pour so hopefully it will behave itself. I've got the mat underneath so any of the paint that has run off I will leave that to dry and use the skins in jewellery making. I don't normally use green in my jewellery so it'll be nice to have some, some green skins. So stay tuned for the dried results which I will show you in a couple of days. Once the painting was dry, I looked at it in lots of different orientations and decided I liked it this way up in portrait orientation. It did dry a little bit dull, um, duller than it looks in the photograph. So I just went in with the brush and highlighted some of the green and purple bits separately with brushes. Once I'd done that, I went in with a fan brush and did some Bob Ross style trees in a U-shaped tree line, which worked really well with the portrait orientation. And once I'd done the trees in black, I went through and added snowy, snowy highlights to them um, which I think look really cool so it's always great to do a Bob Ross style um, tree in a painting. So here's the final painting. I'm a bit disappointed that the the kind of boundary between the sky and the trees isn't more prominent but this is an abstract art technique and it was never really intended to be kind of like a, a conventional aurora painting. It was a painting inspired by aurora. It's interesting though, I actually really like it when I photographed this and cropped it and actually took off a lot of that top section. I thought it looked really nice, but I also do like all of the, this stuff at the top. And where I brush painted the purple and the, the more vivid green on top, it actually worked really well. I had a bit of a happy accident, <laughs> Bob Ross style. The green paint that I was using was very, very watery because it was a kind of cheap craft paint. But what that did, it meant that it was kind of um, transparent. So when I went over some of the other regions, the darker stuff was showing through and it kind of gave it a real kind of greenish glow. 
which actually worked perfectly and I liked it so much that I watered down some other colours as well and went over the top. So this painting isn't finished yet and doesn't, doesn't have like a top coat on it. I've not put any kind of varnish or anything on top of it but I was really pleased with how the trees came out. I really loved the colours once I went in on top with the brush because I think it was a little bit dull before. So the ring light shining off it there. But no, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. I'm really sorry that my camera cut out when I was doing the, the tilting and stretching, but hopefully you, you got the idea of how I made it and I hope you enjoyed the video. See you in my next one. Bye.